Hi, Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your March 16th to the 31st, 2021 reading for you. Now, I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and also to subscribe to my channel. And if you would like to be notified whenever I upload new videos, and I upload all the time, just hit the bell notification button. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading and clear the energy space, once again, a reminder not to be scanned by anybody in the description box pretending to be me offering you a reading. This person is not me. This person is a scammer. Do not be scammed. With that said, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Scorpio. March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides. Ooh, I like that. Just fell right out. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels. Okay, these ones. And spirit guides, angels, and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels. And spirit guides, angels. And spirit guides, show me clearly. Fantastic. And let's see the chakra energy for this time. Scorpio, March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio, March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio, March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly, fantastic, and the energy we need to be mindful of during this time. What is the energy that Scorpio needs to be mindful of? March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. What is the energy that Scorpio needs to be mindful of? March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Okay. going to move this down just a little bit. We're going to start with the chakra energy. We have abundance at the root chakra, which is always a beautiful place to start. And then we have clarity at the third eye. There we go. The third eye chakra. And we're going to put the energy to be mindful of just over to the side for a moment. We're going to take a moment just to talk about this deck because it's so pretty. Right? I don't know if you can see the back, but there are two little faces of children, and this is called the Stolen Child deck, after the Yeats poem, which is absolutely a beautiful poem, and you'll be able to see the the pictures up front on 
on the reverse side in just a minute. But this artist is from Texas, and with everything that has gone on in Texas, I thought it would be just really nice to just support them right now. So if you're interested, this deck is linked in the description box below. Okay, so let's see here. The left-hand side is the inner self. The middle is the heart, the emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what they have to say. So we start off with the high priestess. See how beautiful that is. Then we have the hermit, which is Virgo energy. Time frame, August 23rd to September 22nd. The nine of pentacles and the four of wands. Okay, I'm going to line this up. There we go. Within the heart, we are crowned with the ten of swords, the eight of cups, we have the Queen of Cups, which is you shining through as a Queen Scorpio. And then we have the Lovers, which is Gemini Energy, time frame, May 21st to June 20th. We have the Ace of Swords. That's very interesting. My goodness, everything's just kind of being hit all over the place. The Seven of Pentacles, the World, and the Six of Swords. So there's this type of... There's this energy going around here where it's like you'll feel like you have everything lined up and it'll be kind of lined up in your head very, very nicely. And then things are just going to kind of just go astray just a little bit, a little bit. And it, it can drive you a little bit mad. So just just be aware of that. Just be aware of that energy around during this time where it's like things aren't lining up exactly the way that we would want them to be. Okay. So the energy to be mindful of, we start with the Prince of Swords. This is air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. But this is also an energy of somebody who's really in it for a fight. They really are. They're, they're really charging forward. They have a certain way of seeing things. They have a certain way of going after things. And this can kind of sweep you up. It can, like you start to, to rally around a cause that isn't yours. You start to kind of get very passionate about something that has nothing to do with you. And so here, Scorpio, it's like, don't get caught up in other people's battles because it won't end the way that we want it to end. It won't end in the way that like this, this coming together and this understanding and this, this beautifulness that, that is desired, that we want will be. It's, going to be. it's going to be nasty and we're going to find ourselves standing in the middle of this nastiness, you know, not quite knowing how we got there. So just be very, very mindful of that. And then we have justice. Yeah. The sense of, of justice. Now, this can be this person is, is fighting for what they view to be astoundingly just, but it's also being discerning about when you fight it, when you don't, you know, because with the justice card, if we follow everything, excuse me, by the letter of the law and say, it has to be like this, it has to be like that. And we don't, and we don't look at things more emotionally, honestly, you know, truthfully for us, it can leave the world being very rigid and and Scorpio, that's just not your thing. Like to have a very rigid world isn't what you're desiring, especially at this time in your life at all. So here at the justice, it's like, don't, don't get caught up. I mean, seriously, don't get caught up in other people's battles. It's not, not having a voice. It's not, not having a say, but it's, it's really stepping back from things and saying, you know, how is this leading to my abundance? How is this adding to the clarity of my existence? You know, where is this taking me? Because it's, it's going to be like a runaway train. And, you know, a train crash never, never ends well. So just really be mindful of that. So we have here abundance with the root chakra. There's a call towards abundance at your root, towards what it is that makes you abundant within your life, what it is that kind of sets you apart from others. So that's going to be coming forward very strongly during this time. It's like, what is my abundance? What is my prosperity? What is it that I desire? And then there's a clarity that's coming through with the third, with the third eye. There's a sense of, you know, insights, ideas, prosperity opening up. And it's like, oh, well, I can move forward this way. Like I, I'm seeing roads that I hadn't seen before. I'm seeing ways forward that I didn't think could be a part of me. And it's this clarity that comes in because the third eye is open because there is, there is more to this than what we had realized. And it brings us to the high priestess. It brings us to the veil being lifted from our eyes, which is part of the clarity that comes through with the third eye chakra. So it's very intense. And this can be a very intense time. We, we can feel spiritually like we're moving forward, like we're evolving in a way that makes the world feel like it doesn't fit. You know, it's kind of like when you have pants that are a size too small. It just doesn't fit and it's really uncomfortable. And so here as the veil is lifted from our eyes, we're seeing things more openly, more honestly, more truthfully. And it's kind of like we're setting ourselves free. We're saying, okay, listen, you know what? 
that's not fitting. That's not what I want. That's not how I want things to be. I'm looking forward to things for me, not for how everybody else will perceive it, not for what anybody else desires, but for the power and the beauty and the understanding that is me. And the high priestess is, is so astoundingly powerful. So I love her paired with your next card with the hermit because the high priestess isn't showy. The high priestess very much keeps herself to herself and says, this is what I see. This is my honesty. This is my truth. This is what I'm nurturing. This is what I desire. This is what is being revealed to me. And she doesn't need to show everybody else. She doesn't need everybody else to agree with her. But she is having, again, the veil lifted from, be, from in front of her eyes. She is seeing people so much more honestly than she had seen them before. So what this means is that where we would sit there and think, oh, well, it has to be like this. Like everybody says, oh, it's like this. We're starting to see people for who they truly are for who they truly want to be, for what they truly desire. And it's like, oh, I can see a bit of sourness there. I mean, that's why it's so important not to get caught up in other people's battles during this time because we're going to have the sense of, oh, well, that doesn't sound right. Like, there, there's something off. You know, what is it? And it, this is a time for us to have a time of self-discovery, of understanding, of really knowing what it is that we want, where it is that we stand, what it is that we desire. And as we do so, we turn inward and we start to see the light that guides us. We start to see the light that, that holds our truth. It's like, this is our beacon. This is our lighthouse. This is what keeps us from crashing on the shores. Let this truth guide. And it's not saying that our truth, like the individual truth, supersedes the truth of the whole. What it is saying here is that as I move forward in my knowledge, in my understanding of who I am, of what I need. So it's kind of like trying to make an introvert an extrovert. An introvert can have great fun, you know, talking to people and doing all this stuff. But at the end of the day, they need time to recharge, to be quiet. While an extrovert feels charged and invigorated being in the midst of everybody. You can't make one into the other. So here it's kind of like you can't make one into the other. We have to look at our strengths, look at our joys, look at what it is that we desire and really let that, let that shine in a very true, honest and open way. And it's, it's quieting the world. It's saying, you know what? I'm not getting caught up in the endless drama, the endless trauma. And what I'm doing here is moving towards my prosperity and really, and really enjoying it. I'm connecting with my abundance. Now, the abundance for each individual is different. You know, some of us are really good at, at art. You know, some of us are really good at mechanics. Some of us are really good at, you know, whatever, X, Y, Z. You know, it can go on forever. What we're seeing here is looking at our strengths and saying, I know there's going to be a lot of hard work to come. And I know I've already worked so hard, but in this moment, I get to enjoy what the fruits of my labor, what I have planted. I get to enjoy the bounty that is coming my way. And this is within our inner self. Our inner self is like, listen, I need to look at things for me, not to keep up with everybody else, not to be what everybody else wants me to be, but to be in alignment with me. And as I do so, okay, there starts to be this world that opens. We start to see beauty coming in. We start to see new job opportunities coming forward. We start to see looking at things differently. So even if this doesn't mean that we switch jobs, you know, we could be quite contented or say, you know, this is a really good job. I have really good benefits. Why would I leave this? It becomes a time where we start to look at things and we start to build things on the side. We start to build soul passions on the side. We start to really connect with our world and ourselves and our talents and our gifts and our, and our, our prosperities, you know, our individuality. And that is a game changer because when we, we sit in our power, when we meditate in our power, when we embrace that light that shines inside of us, okay, that turns us inward, we start to see ourselves quite differently. And this is a card of rejoicing. This is the card of happiness and success. And it's like, I've worked this hard to have this bounty move me forward. I've worked this hard to have this joy guide me. And it is awesome. And then it brings us, when we're looking at our hearts, it brings us to the Ten of Swords. And the Ten of Swords is the dying away of the old self, the rebirth of the new. And the Ten of Swords is hard. It's not an easy card. It very much connects here, Scorpio, with the card that identifies you, the death card. So that's your card in the major arcana. Here, this is my minor arcana death card. It's the dying away of the old self, the rebirth of the new. So when we see the 10 of swords in the Rider Waite Smith deck, we see a body laid out on the ground with 10 swords stabbed into him. 
Now it's overkill. So it can be that we're looking at things and our mind is blowing it up to overkill. It's like it's too much for us to deal with at that moment. But we're also looking at things in this darkness before the dawn. And we're seeing that we have a wealth of knowledge within our backs. We have to remember, swords were priceless. Priceless. They made people, they broke people, quite literally. Your family could be elevated by, by a sword being put in somebody's hands. Because only nobility was allowed to own a sword. It took years of practice, it took time, it took patience. But it was a symbol of not only defending what is important to you, but also a symbol of nobility, prosperity, and bounty. And so when we have ten swords in our backs, when we have the vulture looking over us and saying, what's going on here? Are you down for the count? You know, do I get to have my meal? When we look at the ten of swords, we see that wealth within our back. We see the, the knowledge that we have accumulated, even though we didn't want it. You know, we might have thought we were perfectly fine being as we were. But that's what growing is all about. Growing is all about changing the unbelievable innocence and bringing wisdom to the table and moving us to the forefront of power and of understanding and of truth. So we take that knowledge that was given to us in, in harsh ways because having a sword in your back is always going to be harsh. And we start to see where it is that we want to be led to, what it is that we desire, how it is that we want to move forward, and the fact that we have changed, the fact that we're not the same person we once were. And that, that becomes a game changer for us. You know, things are different. We're moving forward in a very different, very powerful, very intense way. And it brings us to the Eight of Cups. Emotionally, we're walking away from what we once thought we would love. Now, it can be emotionally, as we're reborn, we're looking at what we had lost. It can be the failed relationship, you know, it can be, or the relationship that just simply ran its course and we miss it from time to time. It can be the failed career opportunities or, you know, the fact that we haven't found our right fit. It can be a myriad of things. It can be even the ideologies that we held, the thoughts that we, that we, that we had, the way that we, we looked at the world and judged the world. That's changing. And what we're seeing here is we're seeing ourselves strive for something more. We turn away and say, it's not what I love anymore. It's not what I want. It's not what I need. It's not where I want to be. And you know what? Sometimes the end of a chapter, it's a sad thing or an end of a book of it in a series. It's a sad thing, but it's also a really important thing. We start to see things changing. We start to see things evolving, evolving. We start to see us evolving. And by walking away from what we once thought was so intrinsically important to us, becomes the game changer, becomes where we take our power, we take our truth, and we say, yeah, this is it, this is me. And it brings us to the queen of cups. It brings us to us being a queen. The queen of cups, I mean, she's extraordinary. She looks at the world and she says, listen, I can't change you. And what's more, at times, I don't think the queen of cups would want to. It's, it's too much of a burden. She's going to live her life. And so here, what we're told, Scorpio, is to live our life, to offer our cup up to be blessed by the moon, by the sun, by the stars, by, by the world. And to say, this is my truth. This is what I love in my life. You know, this is, this is what brings me happiness and joy and contentment and prosperity. This is what moves me forward. And the Queen of Cups opens that to us. And just as the King of Cups says, I rule only myself, the Queen of Cups knows she rules only herself. And she walks forward as that example to people, saying, this is, this is what I want. This is what I desire. This is what I need. This is how I'm moving towards my dreams, towards my place in the world. And that's what we're doing here. We're embracing ourselves as queens. So it means instead of kings, kings are the actors upon the stage, that's how I see them. Queens are the directors behind the scenes. They see things that others miss. Okay, they're not focusing just on one person, they're focusing on something bigger, the interconnectedness of it. And so here when we say, I'm living my life because I'm embracing my prosperity and I can only see 
And I can only behave for me, not for everybody else. And it brings us to the lovers. It brings us to falling in love with life. It brings us to a duality that can't be denied. It brings us to a differing of opinions. It brings us to a differing of knowledge and understanding. It brings us to this place where the doors start to be opened. And we start to see that things can be, people can see things differently, which I think our world is forgetting. We can see things differently and still get on and still respect each other. There's the Taoist statement of this and that is true. And that pretty much sums up the lover's energy, the Gemini energy of there could be a myriad of different ideas and different thoughts in different ways. This and that, it can be true. And we're looking at these moments. We're looking at our passions. We're looking at what we love. We're looking at what we desire. And we're opening up to this world in a profound way. And we're embracing, we're embracing a duality of spirit. We're embracing the fact that our heart is more complicated than we would originally like want to think. And it moves us then to the Ace of Swords. This is God's source spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift of knowledge, is setting our mind free. It's focusing on the breath. It's focusing on our discovery. It's focusing on what we want and what we desire and where, how we want to move forward and where we want our world to go and what we want for ourselves. And it's like, my goodness, I didn't realize. I didn't realize the world could be so much bigger than I thought. And so this gift, excuse me, of thought comes in. This gift of the mind. This clarity, this cutting through the nonsense, the, the hogwash, the, the, the inconsistencies of existence. And Spirit is saying here, be patient. Because you're going to see things differently, right? You're going to be seeing, seeing things intrinsically differently than what you had, how you had thought you would be seeing things, how you thought you would be handling things in the public arena. And it leads us to the seven of pentacles. It leads us to spirit say, be patient. Be patient because what is building? Here we have a baby, right, in, in the womb. But what is building creatively inside of you? What is becoming and expanding? The, the heartbeats that are, that are powering our world, okay? There is something that is, is building forward, but it cannot be rushed. On divine time, it will come, not in our time. And so here, what that is saying is that even though we want it, even though we want it to happen instantaneously, right? If we say to divinity, okay, I know. I know what I'm focusing on. I know what, I, like, I'm trimming the fat, right? Can I have a deal? I'm trimming the fat. I'm looking at what I want. I'm seeing things more clearly. I trust you. I trust you guide me. I trust you embrace my world. Like, come into my world and help me move forward more greatly, more profoundly, more, more passionately than, than what I had originally thought it could be. It brings us then to the world. The world opening up to us in a way we didn't expect. The world becoming a part of us in a way we, we hadn't seen before. The world in the public arena is not the scary, overwhelming place. It can be, yes, most definitely. But what we're seeing here, because there is such a sense of, I've worked too hard to run away now. There's a sense of, even if I am terrified, I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm going to keep on going. I'm going to push myself. I'm going to conquer this fear. I'm opening up to it. And what this brings us is the sense of accomplishment. Like, even if we're shaking, like even if we can feel ourselves being super nauseous, like shaking, totally afraid, thinking, oh my goodness, you know, how could I possibly? By pushing ourselves, by, by looking into our world and saying, why do I want to hide away? Why do I want to silence myself? It is time to push forward. It is time to embrace my greatness. It is time to move towards something so much more than I imagined. And it's, it's facing down fear. And it's facing prosperity in a way that we, we just didn't anticipate. And the world comes forward. We get, we get to embrace this world in an extraordinary way. And it brings us to the Six of Swords. It brings us to taking our knowledge, 
taking our understanding and moving forward. It brings us to seeing more than what we have seen before. And it, it opens up our eyes. The waters are choppy. Yes, at times they are. Emotionally, we will doubt ourselves. We will fear. We will think, I'll never have that happiness. I'll never have that, that stance of greatness. You know, that head to the sky, the chest out, that stance of, I can do it. But if I embrace my love, if I embrace my passionate truth, if I look at myself openly and honestly, I can. And I can face the fears. And I can stand on trembling legs, but still stand in my, in my truth, in my passion, in my power, in my greatness. And it becomes a game-changing time. It does. It's like, oh. It's like, oh. It's that light bulb moment. It's like things are illuminated that once were so dark. It's like, it's like, that's what it was for, wasn't it? The hardships, the pains, the disappointments. It was to change me. It was to have me walk a different path that I never would have thought of walking if things had stayed the same. If I wasn't shaken to my core. And that's what's made you a queen, a monarch of your existence, a passionate, powerful person who embraces the duality of life, embraces what you love and what you want. And it moves us. To the spirit animal message. Scorpio, March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. March 16th to the 31st, 2021, Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Fantastic, these two. We have here the lizard spirit. Dream the world into being. Dream your dreams. Look at what it is that is absolutely desired. And let us embrace them. Let us look at our dreams and say, instead of this is folly, say, how do I bring this forward? Maybe not the full dream that I had, you know, but in different ways, in different places, different powers. How do I bring this dream into fruition, into my waking world? It then brings us to the dog spirit. Be loyal to what you love. Because if you're not loyal to what you love, which is at the root of your heart, then what are we loyal to? Be loyal to your passion. Be loyal to your brilliance, your heart, your, your power, your, your joy. Your subconscious chakra message. Is life purpose? This is the throat chakra. Speaking, living, you know, embracing your life purpose, ascending in that life purpose. And we always think it has to be great. You know, a million light bulbs, you know, flash bulbs going out off cameras, taking pictures of us. No, a life purpose can be very quiet, but astoundingly beautiful. A life purpose is the ascension to why we're here on this earth. Subconsciously, this is what we're turning towards. It brings us then to our subconscious spirit animal message, which is the, sea, the seahorse spirit. It says, watch and wait. Watch and wait as you develop, as you become, as you see the way the world is turning, as you see yourself stepping into the power of yourself. Watch and wait, because divinity has a plan, and it's kind of better than anything we could plan for ourselves. The subconscious person message is the king of cups. So you have the queen of cups here. Subconsciously, you're embracing the, the king of cups. You're ruling your world. Honestly, truthfully, and succinctly. And you're stepping into your power. And it's like, I can't rule everybody else. I can't tell anybody else what to do. But I can, I can rule myself with pride with dignity, with dedication, with, with brilliance. And that, that is the extraordinary thing. That's the powerful thing for this time. It's like I can't, I can't rule anybody else, but I sure as heck 
can, can, can have this rule, this, this distinction over me, this power over me. It brings us to the subconscious tarot message, which is the five of swords. We're going to be facing something that we don't want to face. It's like, we've been there, we've done that. Unfortunately, we got the t-shirt, right? And it wasn't fun. But we're facing it again because we didn't embrace ourselves fully. We didn't learn fully. And we're facing it again because we have to stand in our brilliance, in, in our understanding, in, in confidence of ourself. And that, that's the extraordinary thing. Because we will find that even though we're tested during this time, we, we step more truly into ourselves, into what we want. All right. All right, Scorpio. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as new doors open and as we embrace a beautiful, beautiful power of celebration. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. forward in peace and in harmony, Scorpio.